companies are just starting to get it that they have to meet employees nowadays where they are versus before they were always like that employee has to come up to where I need them to be and that's just the way it is now they have to uh, meet their employees Welcome to the Optimized Workplace. I'm your host, Fran Dean Bishop, where our discussions with influencers, experts, and innovators are helping transform the well-being and sustainability of today's workplaces and spaces. And today I have the honor and pleasure of welcoming Joey Cooper, an expert in community building and the dynamic force behind ConnectSuites.com. As the founder and CEO of Connect Suites, she's working to revolutionize property and community engagement, transforming spaces into vibrant, interactive hubs. Joey, welcome to the show. Oh, it's so, so grateful to be here. It's so good to see you, and uh, I'm excited to, to, to be a part of your show. Well, I'm excited as well. Jo- Joey and I know each other transparently through other uh, CEO networks, and I know she is a maven. I mean, she has been hard fast in the tech world for quite a while. So I was no surprise that you have Connect Suites up and running. So tell us a little bit more about Connect Suites as we dive in. Yeah, it's really a community building platform. So it helps companies, organizations. We we specialize in commercial real estate properties, helping properties to kind of come together together. Uh, bring their the people who walk onto the building every day. So really, it's an employee engagement platform that helps them to to find uh, connection and communication on that property. It makes you know whether it's a fitness class or opening their phone with a you know opening the door with their phone or using te- you know using it to book conference rooms. It's just a way to connect everybody and connect and engage the property. If we use it in a workplace, we then help people with all sorts of ways to, you know, close that loop within their own company, whether it's culture or helping to bring mentorships, helping to bring up middle management. We're adding a lot of features now that help to kind of bridge that gap for companies as well as uh, workplaces and living spaces uh, just to build community. I love the idea, as you mentioned before, about collaborative, bring collaboration in and engagement, because I think that's one of the big drop-offs and disconnect that happened during COVID. And now we see, you know, with the RTW return to work effort, trying to get employees back, that's one of the things that's missing is people are like, okay, what am I coming back to? So yeah. talk to us a little bit more about the engagement piece and what you're seeing as one of the biggest drivers, not only in just your platform, but one of the biggest drivers for employers in wanting to engage people and bring them back to work. I think one of the th- areas during COVID that was unanticipated was everybody was racing to figure out how to enact their remote workforce. You know, how do you get their offices, home offices set up? It was just such a fast moving train that they really overlooked employee wellness and culture, their own company culture. It kind of got lost in the mix. And they were so focused on how they're going to figure out how to work remotely that they didn't actually know that they were losing a big piece of their culture and their company vision. And they that just had direct communication with, with their employees. So I think that is an industry trend for sure. Um, that's, you know, everybody knows it, but they don't know how to solve it at this point. And communication, I feel like, is the key to all of it. We have our work channels, and then we need channels outside of work that make it, you know, where we're not mixing in in that thread of just, you know, the common everyday. Like, how do we make our workers feel um, engaged and that they're learning and they're growing with the company? They know what your vision is. They know where they're trying to take their company. And that, that communication piece is lost, you know, because what are we doing? We're sending out an email or we're working in Slack. And so I think that way in the industry, I think everyone's scrambling to find out what channels really work. How do I talk to employees without just having some happy hour to get them together? Nobody wants a ping pong table or a happy hour. They're just done with those things. Right? <laughs> no more of those. It's so 90s. It's so 90s, right? It's so 2000s. 20. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exactly. You know, so it's really bringing in some other ways to make your employees feel like they're part of, uh, you know, the vision of the company and, and is what I feel like. And if it's a workplace, you know, right now with properties, it's a collection of offices, a collection of employees that are coming to a space every day and getting them back 
they're pretty reluctant, you know, to come back into the office because they doesn't seem to have, you know, they're kind of a, a shell of what they were. Mm-hmm. And so they really do want the amenities. And that's, that's the thing that's very interesting is they want to come in and have, you know, more of their lifestyle, a campus as if you will. So what are you finding as the, kind of the number one amenity on, on with your platform that people really love? It's really different depending on lo- the location in the country. If it's the West Coast, it might be more, um, you know, bringing in fitness or, you know, like a executive showers or it might be wellness, lots of meditation or wellness activities, things that kind of really help people to feel like they're, they're t- being taken care of. And I think if you go maybe toward the East, you get that as well, but you might see people having more of their lounges and the way that they interact in the space a little more important to them. It varies, but inevitably each company has its own culture and each property has their own culture. And the people who came were attracted to whatever that area had to offer, right? So if they're in an office space, they picked a, a, an office space within a city or a, or a rural location or even a you know suburban location that really fit for their company culture. So I think that's the area that companies can really find um, ways to engage their employees by what is their vision. So like you look at companies like Patagonia, you know right away they're sustainability. And, you know, so they, they put that as an overarching message throughout their, um, you know, throughout their company values and and mission, right. And they allow their employees to be involved in that. So, you know, right away, when you go to work for that company, what their values, what they stand for, what their, you know, what their vision is and what they're trying to do. And I think that's where companies are kind of floundering, like being able to articulate their message to their employees in a way That's that nice. makes sense, right? That makes sense yeah. to the employee. So what they need to get involved in, if you are about, you know, sustainability or what, you know, that is your your mix, what are you doing to show companies or your employees that mission and how it affects, you know, their, your everyday working life? Are you allowing them to, you know, be involved in different charities or help, um, you know, with things like, you know, recycling or, you know, turning out the lights, you know, so building in some of those types of programs into your platform just helps to tie in that vision and and keep it as a message to your employees all the time. I'd love to hear kind of, you know, what was your vision in starting Connect Suites? Like where did the whole idea come from um, that got you here in the first place? So I was working in San Francisco and I had went to work for, um, I, been kind of uh, asked to come to work when I was like for this property. It's a million square foot JP Morgan owned property Mm -hmm. right on the waterfront uh, fully. It was, it was full. Um, You know, we had over like 5,000 people walking onto the building property every day across Mm -hmm. the street from the giant stadium. We're right, you know, just right in the hubbub of, of uh, San Francisco. And my job, I thought, what am I doing in property management? At this point, I'd done a lot around, real estate and things, but I thought, do I know what I'm doing here? But I, uh, it turns out I used every single skill I'd ever done. And my job was client engagement. How do I make those people that walk on that property every day feel engaged, feel part of a campus, feel like they really want to be there? I really took that challenge as if you are a company who are going on, to, if you're a property, your job isn't just to attract a new leaseholder. Your job is to attract employees to your leaseholders. So that's where I took it, that attracting and retaining one step further down to the employee structure. And how do you get, we, you know, like Google campus, you know, that's, they do that for a reason. All of these big tech companies do that for a reason is they want those employees to want to come to work and want to stay there, want to work late, you know, never go home, those types of things. So once I was there, I started to get a lay of the land. Then I realized I have no way to communicate with anybody. I have these employees that are walking onto the property, but I only have access to about a hundred people mm-hmm. and I can only put up so many signs in the bathroom and I can only put up, you know, digital signage. So we had to find a better way to communicate. And at the time there wasn't a product like this out there. Now there is COVID sort of helped companies awesome. to pivot. Yeah. And make a, make a more, you know, <laughs> more of this type of a platform. So it really comes down to then created a mobile app that we could get all the employees on. And then we found the things through focus groups and surveys and things to see what what were they interested in. So we knew 
um, what to what to give them for content and what to give them for activities and things to get them engaged and using the app. And by, you know, overwhelmingly on that particular property, it was really, they wanted to have, you know, build an ecosystem around the property. They wanted to feel like they were part of the area, not only just the property. So we could go out and connect area businesses and bring in, um, you know, we brought in like a wellness fair with a with a local company that they set up and they brought in everything from dentists to food boxes, you know, like the vegetable boxes to drink companies to, you know, chiropractors. They just kind of engaged. And that really helped us to see, you know, we had almost, you know, 80 to 90 percent participation in these wellness fairs and on the app, just getting people because they that's what they wanted. They wanted more of that. So adding the fitness classes, adding, you know, communication like, um, you know, do you want to go for a walk at lunch? You know, allowing people to kind of communicate together and find find commonalities. We had a lot of pets on the property. So, you know, finding a walking service. People love their dogs. They love, they love their bringing dogs. their animals oh. to work. We got it. You know, we got that going on around here in our office team. People love bringing the pet and everybody stops and, you know, at lunch break, breakfast, coffee. That's a big, big deal. So I'm so wondering, when was the aha moment for you to say, okay, with all these collaborations, all these integrations coming in, people having all this connectedness, when was the aha moment? Because so often people wonder, you know, for entrepreneurs, when was it that you decided I'm giving up my day job and I'm going to go and pursue this, you know, this business? I just loved it. I really loved it. Once I started, I really loved working at that property and I loved the way the approach that the management team took. And I thought, this is something that is is not out there. It's really needed. I love the technology piece. I love, you know, I was creating um, streaming channels and OTT networks. So my other company, I do a lot of video and and marketing and that type of thing. But this technology piece was something that was just kind of a bug inside of me. And I'm not technology by nature. Like I'm not, I didn't, you know, I'm not a coder, I'm not an engineer, but I love that just the idea to, you know, create this. And I felt like that, you know, for me, it's, I've always believed really strongly that we can't solve anything if we don't collaborate. If we don't become a, you know, a unit together, we're all out here working in silos. And when you work in silos, you're only focused on your silo and you don't really see how that problem can come together. So that was that connect piece of it. Just like I had been dreaming of a way to collaborate with everybody that I love collaborating with. And I felt like this was, this was my opportunity to sort of bring that vision um, that I had in my head together and say, why can't we collaborate as companies, either, you know, a a single company as an organization, as a collaboration, a a series of companies as a collaboration, we, you know, nonprofits as a collaboration, how do we create that hub that really helps ideas to come alive and people to feel valued and useful and have a voice at the table where they might not otherwise have it. I love that. I love the fact that you recognize that, you know, to serve the employee experience and the customer experience, it's not a one-off, right? Yes. It's not a one and done. There's not a one size fits all. And that people need multiple levels of integration and experience. That's the one thing kind of I'm taking from this. And that to bring that together, that's one of the biggest pieces when we, you know, when we go out and we assess and we survey employee groups, you know, what is missing from the employee experience, that idea to to not feel alone and not feel like I'm not connected. And then what the layers of connection are like that people have at home in their home life that they like to bring into work and have those work experiences. So I love that multi-angled effect. We talk a lot about that at Well Team Culture and, and some of the work that we do. So let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, yes. You know, now I'd like you to put your expert hat on since okay. you've been in the trenches for quite a while, you've been around the community. You know, one of the things that we're seeing as a trend is that, you know, here in the Washington area, in terms of trying to bring people back to work, you know, the federal government is trying to do that. And as a spillover of the municipalities, the state governments, and lo and behold, the businesses are as well. I think there's a lot of um, reports, there's a lot of data statistics around the fact that, yes, people are, they feel good at home, but maybe they're not as productive as they could be. It's a great study at a Stanford University and MIT last year around um, just the overall productivity of people and how much work they actually got done. They may feel more productive at home 
because the commute is 30 seconds rather than, you know, three hours. I get it. But there needs to be more of a hybrid approach of that as opposed to all, all of one or all of the other. So I'd love to hear what you're seeing and, uh, you know, from your your market, uh, just kind of customers that you work with, as well as just the community itself in terms of, you know, what's the next big thing? I think there's lots of inflection points that mm-hmm. we've seen since COVID, right, with regards to what's important to employee experience. How did we create a dynamic culture? What is really a great place to work that may have been before COVID? That's not the case now. What are you seeing as the next big inflection point when it comes to the employee experience and workplace culture? I think it's really going to be built around mentorships and actually having access to the right people within the company. I think that is is where I'm seeing um, you have especially, uh, especially younger workers that are coming in, have a less monetary requirement. They don't really care as much about money. It doesn't seem like in some instances, I'm sure that doesn't always, yeah. but I think that they really want that, you know, of course they do. <laughs> yeah. It's always a balance. There's a balance. Know, there's a balance. <laughs> but I think they want to feel like they, they know where they can go in the company and they might want to move laterally or, you know, they might not always want to go up, you know? So I think that with mentorships and learning, um, being able to learn in other, about other departments and divisions is, is a trend that I'm seeing. And I think that second big trend is really around, again, what I was saying around them feeling like their company represents their personal values so that they're fit for them in that respect as well. Um, yeah. So that's kind of, that's, those are the two that I'm really seeing that, that, but maybe I'm, you know, I am also focused on those two. So yes. I'm, I'm missing, you know. Some other things, but yeah. No, I think that's incredibly insightful. I, I do feel coming out of COVID that people have a real awareness around what's self-worth, what's important to self, their own core values, what I'm not willing to compromise on anymore. Right. I'm not willing to compromise on my time for the bigger salary, right? I can live in a small town, rural community, do good work, make, you know, maybe three quarters of what I made before and still feel like I have a really whole satisfying life and I'm feeling productive. I'm feeling full. I'm feeling excited. And yes. I don't necessarily have to work in uh, X town and make X anymore. I yeah. can give up some things, right. And give up some of those perks. So I totally agree with you. And I think too, just to that point, the other thing that companies are slow to recognize it depends on, I think it depends on the size of the company and whether resources and, you know, obviously bigger enterprise companies are slower moving and smaller companies are understaffed or, you know, so there's different problems, but I think that companies are just starting to get it, that they have to meet employees nowadays where they are versus where before they were always like that employee has to come up to where I need them to be. And that's just the way it is. Now they have to uh, meet their employees. So their approach has, can't be, it has to be an omni-channel channel approach really to how each worker is going to respond. And that is a challenge, I think, for employers because it's like, you know, you really have to read minds sometimes. I'm sure these HR departments are really, you know, you can't have all, you know, just put one program out that is a one size fits all anymore. It has to have some some changes and differences and give something to each person in a in a smaller way. Yeah, I love that. You're absolutely right. I know for us, you know, 80% of what Aerobodies does is in a government federal space, right? So yeah. 80% of our clients are there. And one of the things we're seeing, uh, particularly over the last couple of years, there's a lot of focus on employee experience, on workplace, on the design. I was just on the phone earlier this morning with one of our um interior designers were designing a workspace, again, that evokes uh, warmth and uh, collaboration. And, you know, we're taking into consideration, you know, the changing of the circadian light and and the floor and the smell and the acoustics and all of that, that so gets into it, but also creating spaces of connection, whether it's, you know, it's not just a pantry, you go in and grab your food, but it's a place of connection and collab that you can really have a real conversation. It's set up for that. And it's not necessarily treadmill desks, you know, and it's not necessarily standing desks. There's so many other more innovative ways that you can get at that that's fun and it's challenging and it's interesting. And it really makes people feel like I'm getting something more, you know, leaving my home, which is, I think, what's really missing. So I'd love to turn the page a little bit. One of the things I love to ask on the to all of our guests on the Optimized Workplace is, you know, what are you doing to support your own well-being? Oh, 
Ooh, that's and, a good um, question. It, yeah, in 2024. So, you know, right, we're a place of well-being and support. And, you know, obviously we interview a lot of entrepreneurs, which is phenomenal. But one of the things we're really supportive of, of what are our entrepreneurs doing to support their own work-life balance. So how are you evoking that for yourself, Joey, in 2020? I love that because, you know, it's so difficult, especially when you love what you do, because it's hard to turn the switch off sometimes. Mm -hmm. So for me, especially doing technology and, and working across multiple time zones and, you know, kind of that tiredness around, you know, just the hours and the time that you put in to do something. So I've made a really conscious decision to put my phone down when I have family time or when I'm with friends. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me to, um, you know, to our, you know, try to put my phone down and also to just <laughs> truly unplug. I go take, I take a weekend off now. I take, you know, and sometimes I want to creep back over and, and get back yeah. into it, but it just felt to me that I was a lot of the time when you're just working, you're, you're not as productive if you're just working to through processes where if I put myself in some time limits, it gave me well-being, it gave me rest. And it also helped me to, you know, prioritize a little bit better because before I was just kind of found myself, oh, you know, just taking up those extra hours to just continue to, to just putter away at work. When you go back and you look that you sent several emails at two and 3 a.m., you're like, does the person think I'm a little nuts if I'm sending those emails <laughs> Do I have a life? So yeah, that's, exactly. that's what I've done. And I feel, you know, I feel like the last few years, you know, always starting a new venture is always a stressful thing, but prioritizing the family kind of helps not them not to feel so. I love that. Uh, I mean, you know, we didn't put it in her bio, but Joey is a serial entrepreneur. She's She's been very modest, but she's started several tech companies and been a part of a lot of ventures. So I love that fact. I think that's a, a gem of wisdom, I like to say, a gem of wisdom <laughs> that you take step away so that the, the work and the well-being of life don't blur themselves. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways that I feel is coming out of COVID. I was, I was with a team yesterday um, doing a speaking engagement and you know, one of the, the the leaders of the organization said, you know, they made a concerted effort to let everybody go remote. So they're a hundred percent remote company. But the other thing was, is that, you know, take responsibility for your own personal values and your own personal self. Yes. I'm not asking you to answer emails at 8 p.m. I'm not asking you to be online on Sunday morning. I love that. So you have to cut off yourself. You can't yes. blame that on your boss if you're not cutting off yourself. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways from what you just mentioned is being willing I love to that. step yeah. away, put the phone down, step away, cut back, realize, you know, this is a two way street. You've got to take care of yourself. And here's the number one. Everybody is replaceable. Yes. Everybody's replaceable. Right. So if you don't, they're just going to replace you. It sounds horrible, but it's true. It so you have true. to be willing to, to step away. Yes. I, I, I love that. That taking responsibility for yourself is such, that's a great nugget because I think we live in an era of, you know, where's the blame going to come from? And and I think employees need to learn to take better responsibility for their for themselves and take their well-being into account. If you are a person prone to anxiety, what are you doing to help yourself manage that anxiety? You know, what what things are you putting into place for your own health and well-being? And I know it's not that's an easy, you know, I don't mean that to sound harsh by any means, but it, it is an important thing, I think, because once you do take responsibility for yourself then you uh, definitely, people are more attracted to you, I think, as a person. A yeah. thousand percent. I couldn't agree with you more. This has been such a great conversation. Joey yeah. Cooper of Connect Suites. All of the information about Joey and her company and the fantastic app that she has now to integrating workspaces will be in our show notes. You'll be able to connect with Joey if you'd like some more information. And Joey, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much. It was so much fun. And thank you all for joining us today for... The Optimized Workplace. I'm your host, Frandine Bishop. And remember, as I always tell you, it's many that small, monumental moments in your day, every day, that make the biggest difference in your life. If you have any questions on what we discussed today, check out our show notes. Be sure to follow us on any of your favorite platforms where you like to listen to your podcast or visit us over on LinkedIn at The Optimized Workplace. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.